All right, guys, we stopped at this point, okay? And we are going to continue basically from here. So now we have these, uh, you know, this job, okay, configured. I mean, it's an eating job that we're going to extend. So we have this job configured here, and we've basically, um, you know, everything that we need, we've basically configured them right here with the Docker Compose and everything is here. All right, we're creating a network that all of the services will actually be connected on. All right, and then, so the next thing we need to do now is to basically extend this particular, all right, service, okay, for uh, this particular job, all right, for all of the three services, so front-end product and shopping cart. Right, but before we do that, I mean, let's just try to create our Docker Compose file, right? So here I'm gonna say services, all right? And of course the service name, it's going to be app, just, all right? It can be any name actually, okay? But then let's just stick to the app name that we've been using. So the image that we are going to be, all right, running as a container is going to come from here all right, so that's going to be DC underscore image underscore name. Okay, and then that is going to connect. All right, to don't forget your dollar sign. Make sure that you check the colibris and everything correctly. So that will be DC underscore image. All right, underscore tag, right? And then here we also have to open up the port as well. And then, so for the port, we have this all right configuration that we've done already, and that is going to be DC underscore app, all right, underscore port, okay? And then that is going to connect to basically the same name. I mean, we use the same name, all right, for these things, so it's going to be the same name, all right, actually. So DC underscore app underscore port, right? Now, because the reason why we are having DC underscore app port, and then the same thing is because the front end is going to connect on port 3001. And of course, the host port and the container port should match in this case. The product service is going to connect on port 3002. And that should be the host port and the container port, all right, as well. And then the shopping cart is going to connect on port 3000. All right, and the thing 3002, right? So that should be the same thing for the host and for the container. So the front end is going to connect on port 3000, I mean, products for 3001, shopping cart for 3002. And these are services that are not the same, right? They are not like the other one that we did that we basically just simulated, all right, the development, the staging, and production. So this time around, we have three services that would actually be started on different ports, right? So we have to parameterize them like this. Now, the next thing we need to specify here, which we didn't do, all right, in the last project that we worked on, is to basically specify the networks, all right, that this particular service will have to, all right, connect to. Okay, so here I'm going to basically put the name here. So the name of the service or, or the network is going to be micro or right, service. Now, if I put the network like this, I need to specify all right here as well. Okay, so here I'm going to say networks. All right, and then I'm going to come here and I'm going to say microservice. All right, so microservice is the name of the network. And then here I'm going to say something like external. All right, is what it is true. Okay, so basically what I'm saying here is that this microservice network is not a network that was actually created all right by Docker Compose, but rather it is a network that has been created. So basically, what I'm saying here is that Docker Compose is going to basically leverage all right this particular network that has been created already. So with this configuration, Docker Compose is not going to create its own network. It is basically going to look within the Docker all right, environment or the Docker um, all right, engine, basically, to see that if there's any network that has been created by the name microservice, it is basically just going to connect all of the applications all right, on that particular network. right? So that will allow our services to basically connect on the same all right, network. Okay? So that is the Docker Compose configuration right there. So let's go ahead now and let's complete all right, the deploy or right, job by configuring all right, you know, all of the extents that we need to configure. Okay. So here I'm gonna come here 
And of course, this one is going to be deploy underscore front, all right, end, all right. And of course, don't forget your extends. So what are we extending? We're basically extending the deploy, all right, job. Okay, so that is what we're extending. So variables. So what are the variables that we need to configure? So the variable we need to configure are basically these two variables. So the add pod variable. So let's copy that. Okay, and then let's drop that here. So the variable for the microservice, the name is front end, all right, and the port here is 3000, okay, and that is the only thing that we need to do. So we can copy this, all right, and basically just, you know, extend that. So this is going to be product now, right? So this is going to be what? Product, okay? So that is product, and then, of course, we're extending the same thing as well, but the name is going to change here. So this is going to be what? Product. And the port is 3001. Don't forget to change the port. All right. And then let's copy that. Oops. Copy that also. And the last one is going to be shopping cart, right? Okay. Shopping cart. And don't forget to change the name here also to shopping iPhone cart. And this is going to be 3002. All right. Now, one thing I quickly want to show us here is that. Now, in some cases, you don't want to deploy all your services at once, right? By the time you build your services into Docker images and then you store them in the container registry, you really sometimes do not want to, you know, start all of the containers at the same time, right? Basically, for example, now I can say, well, I want to deploy just the front end, all right, to the development server or to my production server, right? And then I'm not deploying products, I'm not deploying shopping carts, right? I want them to just wait, all right, until maybe there's a change and all of that, and then I want that to be triggered, right? So we can actually also do the same thing actually for the build, all right, jobs that we have here, using a keyword that is called, all right, so let's look at that keyword. So the keyword here will be only, I mean, we've seen that keyword, we've seen this keyword before, right? But this time around, we're going to use it in another way, right? So we're going to say only, and then here we're going to say changes, all right? And then the changes is basically just going to be, all right, I think, okay? And then we say something like front end. I mean, this is front end, all right, slash asterisk, all right, slash asterisk. Now, what does this mean, okay? Now, what this basically means is that, all right, this particular build job, all right, for the front end service should only, all right, be executed if there's a change, all right, to the front end folder, right? So, which means if I edit anything inside of the front end folder, then this job will be triggered. But if I don't make any change to that particular folder, then this job is not going to be triggered, right? So, I can actually do the same thing for the other, all right, you know, services, okay? So, I can come here. All right, and drop this here, and then I'll come here, and of course, you have to change that, okay, to product. I mean, you're basically referencing the product folder. So what this basically means is that, I mean, if I'm editing something, perhaps I go into the front end folder, and I make some changes, right? That means the front end, okay, build job is the only job that will be triggered. Other jobs, if I don't make any change to them, will not, all right, be triggered, right? I mean, that is some of the things or strategies that you can use in your work all right, environment. So let's do the same thing for the shopping cart, right? So for the shopping cart, we basically would also, all right, do the same thing as well. Okay, so shopping cart. Okay, and that is what you have to do. So for the deploy, we will also do the same thing, right? For the deploy job, all right, as, as well. So basically, the idea is that if there is no change that is made to these particular folders, then the build, all right, for that particular job should not be triggered, or the deploy for that particular job should not, all right, be triggered. I mean, that's the idea, all right, behind all of these. So only changes, which means if there is a, if there's any change that is made to this particular folder connected to this particular job. All right, then the pipeline should be triggered. But if there's no change, all right, made to the folder connected to this job, the pipeline should just be all right as is. Okay, so that is exactly what we're trying to achieve right here. So change that to products, and then we can do the same thing for the shopping cart, all right, as well. 
So with this configuration now, if you don't make any change, all right, to your product folder or to your front end folder or to the shopping cart folder, right, nothing is actually going to be triggered, all right? Now, we've configured everything that we need to configure. The Docker Compose has been configured, all right? We don't have anything else um, to actually configure. So let's go ahead and let us, all right, run this pipeline and let's see, all right, if we've done a good job or there's something that we need, all right, to still correct, okay? So I'm gonna come here, clear the screen here on the terminal, and then I'm gonna say git commit hyphen am, all right, and I'm gonna basically say, all right, deploy job added. And then we push that, all right, to the repository. So we push that to the repo. Now let's go back to the pipeline here. All right, so I'm gonna click on build and I'm gonna click on pipeline. And let us see what we have right now. Look at that. This is the pipeline that we canceled, all right, earlier. Remember, we canceled this earlier. But if I look at what I have here, I don't have anything running, right? There's no pipeline, all right, triggered, right? We don't have any pipeline triggered because, I mean, the configuration has specifically stated that it is, all right, when there's a change, okay, to any of these particular folders. And if you look at it here, we didn't make any change, all right, to the folder. So we won't have, all right, anything here. I mean, if I click on pipeline again, right, nothing actually is happening because the configuration explicitly, all right, has said that it is only when a change is made to any of these particular folders that I've referenced here, that is when the jobs will be, all right, triggered. So if I refresh from now till tomorrow, all right, I won't see anything, all right, here. So let's go ahead and let's trigger, all right, the front end, okay, and let's test with that. So I'm going to come to the index.html, or let me just click on server.js, and or maybe package adjacent just look for something to you know to just change right so here i can just edit something here all right and just you know edit that and then of course i've made a change all right to the front end folder so let me go here and say commit all right so we're gonna say front end all right job triggered all right front end job triggered right and then we do git push. Okay, so we've triggered that. So if I come back here now and I click on pipeline, so at the front end job, look at that. The front end job has basically been triggered. So if you look at it now, it's basically just going to work on what? Front end job, all right, the build part, and then the deploy part. That is the thing that it is going to work on. Because, I mean, based on the condition here, we have basically told, all right, the pipeline, based on our configuration, that when a change is made to this particular folder, then this build front end job should be triggered, and the deploy job for this particular front end should also, all right, be triggered. And that is exactly what is happening, all right, in our pipeline, okay? So those are strategies that you can use, all right, to deploy your application. I mean, we're dealing with a microservice application here, basically. I mean, look at that. That was quite fast, right? So we're dealing with a microservice application here, all right? And so in, in most cases, you're not going to be updating all your applications all right at once. And so you want to do it in such a way that, okay, if you're dealing with a front end, all right, and then you build a front end, you do what you have to do with the front end, you push to your repository, you only want the front end, all right, job to be triggered and deployed. You don't want anything to affect other, all right, jobs. And then once you're done with the other, all right, service, like maybe the product service and all of that, you can also commit that change to the repo and that particular job will be triggered, all right, and then other jobs would not also be affected, okay? So now the front end job, all right, has been built and has also been deployed. So first of all, we can go to deploy and then check our container registry, all right, and then we can go to front end and we can see that one minute ago, we have something that was pushed, all right, into the repo. So we can see this particular tag here. And of course, we can go to the operate and then click on environment, all right, and we can also see that we have a new environment here called front end. And we can also see, all right, the job right here. Now, if I click on open, of course, that should open up. All right, guys. I mean, let's give ourselves a round of applause for this. Okay. So the available product, so we can see it. We can see the front end now. And of course, we can see that it's opening. Of course, if I click on this, the job is good. All right. The, the application is going to crash, right? Basically, because we don't have, you know, the product, all right, you know, service uh, deployed already. 
right? But we need to do one more thing here because, I mean, the front end is opening up on port 3000, all right? The product is opening up on port 3001 and the shopping cart is opening up on port 3002, right? So we need to go to instances and we need to open up those ports in our security group, right? I mean, what we have here is just the, you know, the port for the previous project that we did. So I can open up my security group here, all right, and basically edit that. And all I need to do really is just to come here and then change this value, all right, like this, all right, and then change that one like this also, and then I can save the rule, all right? I mean, that is really interesting. So the front end is opening now. Let me close this one. So the front end now is working. I can see my front end application, all right, and then I can see it right from here. So what do you think I should do next? So let's go back and let's, all right, deploy the second, all right, service, which is product, right? So I can come here on the product and I can just go to the server the JSON also and then I can just, you know, delete this test. I don't need that again, all right? I mean, I've made a change and that is actually what matters. So I'm going to come here again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say git commit hyphen am and then I will say here that the product, all right, service, all right, is triggered. Okay, and then I'll push to the repo and basically of course like you have, like you can all like you can already imagine the uh the product service is what is going to be look at that so if i click here now the only job i'll see is what is the product jobs and of course and the deploy or a job for that that is actually the only thing that i'm going to see right here so the other jobs will not be affected in any way because i mean i've not made any change to them so they will just be, all right, you know, the way they have without, all right, any kind of issue, all right, whatsoever. Okay, so the build product job has been completed. The deploy is working now. So let's see and wait for that to also complete, all right, to basically see if we've done a good job. All right, so that's a very good one there, right? Now, if I basically come here to my development server, and then I come here and I see it over PS, now take a look at this. Now this here is product app one, all right? Taking the value from what we specified, all right? In the, uh, you know, the Docker file for the front end, and then this is front end app one, right? And you can see here that basically everybody's, you know, working on their own port. So this is 3001 and 3001, right? But then let's verify the network setting. So Docker network, all right, Ellis, and then here you can see that we only have just one all right, network, and that is what microservice. So now if I come here and I say Docker, all right, network, inspect, okay, micro underscore service. All right, so now I'm inspecting this particular network and I want to verify something actually. I want to verify if these two containers are actually connected to that all right, network, right? That's what I want to verify. So here the microservice was created, okay, and here I can see some containers. So I can see that there's this container name called front end app one, all right, connected to that particular network. And then I can see that this particular, all right, container also is connected to that same network. I mean, look at the IP, this is in two, this is three, right, zero three, zero, all right, zero two and zero three. Okay, so that tells me that basically that these two, all right, containers are connected, all right, to the same network. And without, all right, any doubt, if I click here now, I should not have any kind of crash. I should be able to see, all right, the products that are available, right? So I can see that right here. And I can see that, that from my front end, I am able to communicate, all right, with the products, all right, service from my front end. So guys, Let's go back now and let's go and deploy or write a shopping cart or a service by making a change to that one as well. So I can just come in and just put something here like a comment and just say test, all right, for the shopping cart. And then I can come back here, all right, and basically just say, uh, you know, uh, so let's commit that. So I'm just going to come here and say um, shopping cart, all right, service is triggered. And then I can do my what? I can do my git push. And that is going to basically, all right, trigger just that job, all right, like we've seen already. So if I come here and I refresh the pipeline, I should see now that the shopping cart, all right, section of the pipeline is what is being built, all right, at the moment. Okay. 
So building shopping cart and of course deploying shopping cart. So in this way, you will not affect any other job. So if there's any, uh, you know, changes that you want to make to your front end, you can basically just make that change to the front end and deploy just the front end without affecting, all right, the other, you know, services that you have running. And then if you have any updates you want to make to product, you can make that update to product and deploy it without affecting, all right, any other job within, all right, your pipeline. So now if I come here again and I click on this particular orders, which is basically connected to the shopping cart and I click that, I should be able to see the values all right right here and of course if you go back to your terminal and you refresh this all right or you basically just do docker ps you can see that you have your shopping cart container running on port 3000 and all right two and then if i come here to do the docker network inspect the microservice i can see now that i have product app one container I have shopping cart, all right, container, and then I have the front end container, all right, all the three containers are basically connected to the same, all right, uh, to the same, you know, network. So that allows us to, you know, basically talk to the service. If I refresh again and I click here and I click here, all right, from the front end, I'm able to talk to the two, all right, all the back end services, okay? So thank you so much, guys, all right, for joining me on this one. In the next video, we're going to look at the concept of polyrepo, okay? Polyrepository is what we're going to look at, all right, in the next, all right, video. I mean, we've looked at monorepository. Basically, you have all your services in the same repository, but of course, you know, you have them in different folders, okay? That is monorepo. But polyrepo is basically you having, um, you know, your applications in different repositories, right? Not the same repo, right? Which means you have a project for front end, you have a project for back end, you have a project for, you know, the shopping cart, and then for the product, they are in different repositories, but you are still able, all right, to connect these applications, all right, together. And for the polyrepo, the interesting part is that we're not going to be deploying, all right, to EC2, but we're going to be deploying, all right, it to a Kubernetes cluster. All right. So get ready for that. All right. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you and bye for now.